The purpose of this video is to demonstrate several different ways to find the center of mass of a stick. This example is really meant to introduce a more general technique of using the integral form of the center of mass equation to find the center of mass of an extended object. But before we get to using that equation, I'd like to point out that you probably already have an instinct about where the center of mass of the stick is. This thing is symmetric about both axes, and so by instinct, you probably would guess that the center of mass is right at the center of the stick. But how do you make an argument that this is the case? Well, if you go back to the original equation for finding the center of mass for a collection of objects, you can use that. You can make the ruler into a collection of objects by dividing it into lots of little pieces like this. And since there are so many pieces, we can rewrite the equation in summation form, but nothing fundamental has changed. So let's set the origin of the system to be at the center of the stick, and note that for any dm that is to the right of the origin, there's a sibling on the left-hand side of the origin, and these two have equal and opposite x-coordinates, and their masses are the same, so their contributions to the center of mass equation will cancel each other out. The same is true for this pair, and for every pair, for every bit of mass on the right-hand side of the ruler, there's a sibling on the left-hand side that will cancel it out in the center of mass equation. In other words, the center of mass is right at the origin as we expected. Okay, so what would change if the stick were broken into so many pieces that their masses approach zero? Well, then the equation would look like this. This is the integral form of the center of mass equation, and this equation has the same fundamental meaning as the previous one. It's saying that we should take each bit of mass dm and multiply it by the distance x it is away from the origin. The integral adds up all of those products, much like the summation in the previous equation, and then finally the whole thing is divided by the total mass. So each part of the integral form of the equation corresponds to a part of the summation form. And you should spend plenty of time thinking about how these equations relate to each other. Because if you understand what the integral form means, then you'll be more likely to be able to apply it to different and new situations. So now it's time to use this equation to find the center of mass of the stick, which we have already established is right at the center of the stick. So one of the things I hope your calculus teacher has emphasized is that before integrating, the function and the differential must be expressed in terms of the same variable. So in other words, we need to work on this part of the equation. We know that x is the variable in this equation because each of the dm's is at a different distance from the origin. So before integrating, we need to make sure that we've re-expressed dm in terms of dx, or the width of the differential bit of mass, and then we'll be ready to integrate. So let's take another look at one of these dm's. Its width is dx, and we know that the stick has uniform density. So we can say that the total mass of the stick divided by the total length of the stick is equal to the mass of a differential element of mass divided by the width of that same element. And rearranging, we find that dm is equal to mass divided by length times dx. So now we're ready to substitute that expression back in for dm. And now the integral will involve x's, dx's, and other constants. So we'll want to simplify that and also put in limits of integration. Now you can see that you have dm's that range from negative l over 2 to l over 2. So those will be the limits of integration. And putting those limits on and also doing a little bit of simplification, we're in good position to integrate this thing. And the result comes as no surprise. It is uh, that the center of mass is right at x equals 0, as expected. So what do you think will happen if we change the origin, if we choose a different origin that's at the far left-hand side of the stick? 
Well, we'll start in the exact same way by dividing the stick into many little mass elements. And once again, we'll need to work on this part of the integral, x dm. But actually, not much has changed. Here's a mass element, and it's at a distance x from the origin. We still are going to find that the total mass of the ruler divided by the total length of the ruler is equal to the mass of one of those mass elements, dm, divided by its width, dx. And rearranging, we find that we end up with the same expression that's going to get substituted in to dm. This time, the limits of integration are from 0 to L. And when we go ahead and do the integral, we find that the center of mass is at L over 2. So of course, that's a different result in one sense. We got 0 before, and now we're getting L over 2. But if you take into account that we've set the origin of the system to be at the far left end of the stick, you can see that actually this center of mass at L over 2 is saying that the center of mass is right in the middle of the stick, as we have found in two other ways already. So now we have established beyond a shadow of a doubt that the center of mass of the stick is at right at the center. Of course, I've only been taking into account the horizontal direction, but the same kinds of arguments would apply if you wanted to find the center of mass in the vertical direction. I want to end with one last partial example. Let's say that you want to find the center of mass of a triangle using the integral form of the center of mass equation. How would you do that? Well, break it into small vertical slices as before, and consider a slice with mass dm and width dx that is located at a distance x away from the origin. We know that we have to work on x dm, and in particular, we want to know how much mass is contained in the width dx. Clearly, as you go from the origin out to the far end of that triangle, the areas of the dm's are increasing, so the masses must be increasing as well. So what function, what fraction of the total mass is contained in a single dm? Well, assuming that the density of the triangle is uniform, the ratio of the triangle's mass to its area should be equal to the ratio of dm to dA. Rearranging that equation, we have dm is equal to mass over area times dA. Now dA is the area of a small dm, which will be the height y multiplied by the width dx. Note that the equation for the line that goes along the top of the triangle is y is equal to h over w times x, where h is the height of the triangle, and w is the width of the triangle. And of course, the area of the triangle is going to be 1 half its width times its height. Once you've made substitutions for y and a in the dm equation, you can drop it in here, then choose limits of integration and see what you get. You can do a similar calculation to find the y position of the center of mass. I'll leave the details to you, but here are the answers. So good luck, and if you want to see another example, check out the next video on finding the center of mass of a pyramid.